Welcome back. It's Thursday, February 9th in the NBA. My two favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday, though. A two and two day. Jordan Poole clears his line easily. The best of the day. No sweat bet. Lamella Ball soars under his total in points. And then our two losses, Kenyon Martin Jr. I don't want to talk about it. An absolute brutal beat there. And then the Joel Embiid, Jason Tatum, and Jalen Brown same game parlay never stood a chance. Jalen exits after in the second quarter thanks to Jason Tatum running into him. But either way, a two and two day, a profitable day thanks to the best bet of the day being a bigger play than the other ones. We will certainly take that. Let's go two and zero today. If you are new, welcome to the channel. My name's Austin. Go down below, hit that subscribe button, drop a like too. We certainly would appreciate it. Drop your favorite pick as well. And as I talked about yesterday, this video brought to you guys by Underdog Fantasy. And as of 10 a.m. today, probably by the time you're watching this video, they have a free square live for Mr. Jalen Hurts to get one yard on Sunday in the big game. Take advantage of that in your entries, but also take advantage of using our code COS or the link in the top of the description. 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks. You deposit 20 bucks, now you got 40. Deposit, you know, 100 bucks, now you get 200. So take advantage of it. You can deposit match up to 100 bucks. So take advantage of that. All the links and details down below top of the description. Now let's talk about the NBA though. Let's tread lightly though. It's the trade deadline. It ends, I believe at 3 PM today, Eastern time. So a lot of things could happen by the time I record this video, post it, and then the time the trade deadline comes. But I've kind of taken that into account for my two plays today. And let's go into them. Unfortunately, the best bet that segment is not going to be here today. I know we returned in flying colors yesterday. We're going to take today off because given all the uncertainty, but let's talk about this two, these uh, two plays and let's go to the team that made the biggest trade of the day, and I don't even need to see the rest of the trades because this is the what would be the biggest one. It's going to be the Phoenix Suns. And I'm taking DeAndre Ayton over 33 and a half points, rebounds, and assists, which is currently minus 125 on DraftKings. If you need to take this at 34 and a half, send that. If you need to take his over in points plus rebounds, you can take that. If you need his over in points, I like that too. You want a same game parlay at 20 points and eight rebounds, take that. I think Ayton has a big day today, and let's talk about him. Now, as talked about earlier, the deadline came, and last night while I was asleep, uh, they made a trade, and I, they traded for Kevin Durant. Ever heard of him? Yeah, as Kevin Durant on his way to Phoenix, and they traded away Macau Bridges, Cam Johnson, Jay Crowder, who hasn't played at all this year, and then four first-round picks, some additional draft compensation, a monumental trade in the NBA in NBA history. We haven't seen a ton of these trades go down, and this is a big one, a blockbuster trade. It's going to impact the NBA for the rest of the year. We'll see how it plays along, and we'll obviously talk about this more and more as the season goes on, but that leaves the Suns very short-handed today. They're now going to be without Macau Bridges and Cam Johnson. Devin Booker already slid to miss. They're down Landry Shamit, campaign, and a bunch of other guys. So you're going to see Aiton and CP3, I think, have to carry this offense against the Atlanta Hawks. And they might throw in Torrey Craig, Damian Lee, and maybe someone else, but they're going to be probably running an eight man rotation, probably almost seven man tonight. And I like Aiton to hold it down. I know I've questioned Aiton's motivation, and hopefully the last two games are not just him trying to be included in a Kevin Durant trade, and more so him saying, you know what, I need to step up for this team. And I think he can certainly step up and be a big role for this team today. And you look at the last two games 35 points, 50. 15 rebounds in one of them, 31.16 rebounds in another, totaling 50 and 49 PRAs. I mean, Aiton is a guy that's a very high efficiency guy. And the only thing I ever question about Aiton, I don't question his talent. One of the most talented big men in the league. It's always his motivation if he's going to show up or not. And I hopefully he shows up tonight, given that, well, they don't really have anyone else to show up. So he's going to have to be out there. And the Suns are playing the Hawks. They played him about a week ago, I believe eight days to be exact. And Aiton played well in that game, had 29 PRAs. Problem is he only played 27 minutes as he did not play in the fourth quarter. The Suns get absolutely, absolutely smoked by 30 points and while that could be a blowout today I think the Suns can keep this one close the spread's only six six and a half points so I think they can keep it close at least within 10 and we see Aiton come back in that fourth quarter and hopefully carry us over this but Aiton is a guy that I fully expect to shoot 15 or more times tonight if Aiton goes out there and shoots 12 times he probably is not hitting this but if he's out there shooting 15 times which certainly seems possible given the shorthandedness of this uh this uh, Suns roster he should have a really great chance of hitting this. In fact, he shot 15 or more times in 17 games this season. He's over the sign in 15 of 17. He's had some big games where he grabs like 15, 20 rebounds. And he already talked about in his last post-game press conference that he wants a 30 and 20 rebound game or something like that. So hopefully he goes out there and gets that today. His two misses versus the Cavaliers, one of the best defending teams against opposing big men. And then against the Minnesota Timberwolves, where he had to go up against Rudy Gobert, another decent defender. And he shot below 40% in both those two games. Aiton, like I said, a high efficiency guy. He's normally shooting in the 60%. So last couple games have been around the 80 and like 90% range. He's really talented. We just need him to get to the basket and not even get to the basket. He has a great mid-range game. I just, we need him to show up today. I don't care if he just shoots 15 times. I will sleep at night knowing that we had a great chance of hitting this, but I think he has a big night against the, the Atlanta Hawks. We'll take DeAndre Ayton and the shorthanded Suns. We'll take his over 33 and a half points, rebounds and assists. I don't mind his over in points plus rebounds either. You can play that up to 34 and a half. Don't hurt us, Aiton. We know, we know we've trashed you here before, but I believe in you today. Let's move on to my second pick, and it's going to be a guy on my shirt, a guy that is on the thumbnail, a guy that you guys probably know. 
the Greek Freak, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and I like it's over 33 and a half points. Now, before I dive into why I like this, you can play this at 34 and a half. And also I'll talk about the other two games on the slate in a second. Now let's talk about Giannis because honestly, I don't play overs this high. Normally I don't. It's that's like, you need a lot to go right to hit an over this high, but I think a lot goes right tonight for Giannis. And I think this is a perfect matchup for him against the Los Angeles Lakers. Now over Giannis's last six games, we've seen him be dominant. I mean, Giannis has been dominant all year long. But over the last six, been even better. You see 41, 50, 34, 54, 35, and 24 points going over in five of his last six. Now, obviously, the last game he went under with 24 points. He played a big 23 or 24 minutes in that game. And he also, well, he was in foul trouble too, and it was a blowout. So everything went wrong, and that's how Giannis goes under. But you look at the Lakers. What do they have a habit of doing? Playing close games. This team hasn't won a ton of games this year, you know, sitting a, a several games below 500. But they always play normally close games. The spread is indicative of a close game. Only the Bucks are five and a half point favorites. Giannis normally a guy that starts the fourth quarter. So unless it's like a 30 point game or he's in foul trouble, he should get roughly 35 ish minutes. And he's played really well against the Lakers in his career over the last three games versus Los Angeles. They were 47, 44, and 40 points. So it was absolutely cooking them. And while we need 34 points today, that's a lot. Giannis has been able to get it done. And Anthony Davis, I know he's been in the media over the last you know 24 hours since LeBron broke the record and very weird kind of facial expression, weird game from Mr. Anthony Davis in their last one when LeBron hit the record, just seeing him sitting on the bench. I'm not going to question that. I think he stepped up today, but Giannis has obviously taken advantage of the matchup against Anthony Davis before. Giannis, a guy like any other NBA player, has pride and he wants to show he's the best player in the world. So he gets to go up against Anthony Davis, someone they've always been like, who's better, Anthony Davis or, or Giannis? Giannis has obviously widened that gap a lot. And then obviously LeBron James, now the all-time leading scorer, I think Giannis shows up. The Lakers give up the sixth most points per game in the paint. The Lakers also, they just made a big trade, so they're going to be a little bit shorthanded themselves. And at the end of the day, Drew Holiday probably getting harassed by Patrick Beverly all game, all game long, and Chris Middleton still coming off the bench. So you're going to see a guy like Giannis, unless he's in triple-double mode, which I don't think he will be tonight. He's going to be attacking the paint, dominating them. I think Giannis has a big night. We'll take his over 33.5 points. He can take it up to 34.5. I kind of prefer this more than his PRA line. I don't know if he gets a ton of rebounds and assists tonight. I guess we'll exactly see, but I think Giannis is a big night scoring the basketball. I think he scores at least 35, hopefully 40, maybe even 50 points there. I don't care how he does it. We just need 34 or 35 tonight. We'll ride with Giannis tonight. We're getting Greek freaky. Let's move on and let's talk about the other two games though. I'm only going to do two plays, hopefully go 2-0 and out, and we'll call that a day. Move on to Friday when we can recap the trade deadline and actually know exactly what teams are trotting out there. Now let's talk about the fourth, the one of these games, Bulls versus Nets. Two teams that Bulls could make a ton of trades today. I have no idea. This is a team that could blow it up and I wouldn't be surprised, but also you have the Nets, a ton, team with Literally a ton of new faces. Probably could play 12-man rotations every night. So Bulls, yeah, I would avoid all their props. You have no idea if DeRozan's even playing tonight or Levine or if it's a Vucevic day or if they make a ton of trades. So I'm out on the Bulls props for probably a couple weeks. And then you look at the Nets. What does Cam Thomas's line be now that they got Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and other guys starting? I don't know. I don't mind Spencer Dinwiddie's over seven and a half rebounds plus assists, which was juiced. But at the end of the day, you don't know what this Nets team is going to try it out. So... Or you could maybe go for a long shot play and just say, oh, maybe this is, you know, this guy's game. And maybe this is one that he steps up. I don't really know. Maybe Cam Thomas continues to play well. He's been scorched earth. So I imagine he continues to get a lot of run. But again, you got a Bulls team that you never know who's showing up, even if it's a trade deadline. You got a Nets team with a ton of new faces. So I would avoid that game. And that's for the Nuggets versus Magic game. A weird one here. You see the Nuggets as six, six and a half point favorites here when you would think they'd be bigger, but they haven't been as great on the road. And the Magic have been sneakily... A decent team. Now, one guy I want to mention is Jokic. I was looking at his lines and I looked at them last game and I felt bad. I almost took his PRA line. He cashed that in the third quarter despite a blowout. However, I look at Jokic and his PRA line dropped by one despite him hitting it easily in the third quarter in a blowout. And then his triple double odds went from plus 100 to plus 130. I'm not saying Jokic goes under today, but I won't disrespect him like that. But I wouldn't be surprised. Jokic hasn't had the greatest track record against the Orlando Magic. And I just, Jokic is obviously on a different level right now. He's playing absolutely ridiculous, but his lines are a little bit weird. And while I'm not going to, you know, do a ton of line reading into it, I'm just curious how Jokic plays today. He's obviously been so good. I don't know how many triple doubles he has in his last 12 games. So just probably like eight to 10. He's been really, really talented. And they could also be a team that makes some trades. Bones Highland been on the, not been on the, been on the trade reports. And maybe he gets shipped off to somewhere else for a first round pick or something like that. I don't know. 
So it's going to be a weird day. Obviously, tread lightly. And obviously, the trade deadline ends around 3 p.m. Eastern time. So you'll know exactly who's playing at tip off. But hopefully, we get some positive regression. The Bucks, it would not be surprising to see them make a trade either. So maybe Giannis sees a couple extra minutes. But at the end of the day, I'm going to ride with both these two guys DeAndre Ayton over 33 and a half PRAs, Giannis Tentacumpo over 33 and a half PRAs. And we will call it a day. This is my final reminder use code COS when you sign up for Underdog Fantasy and bet those uh, player prop entries in. If, make sure you use code COS, you get that 100% deposit match up to. To 100 bucks there's also a link at the top of the description and they have that free square dropping at 10 a.m eastern time today probably by the time you're watching this so take advantage of that i'll probably take advantage of it in saturday's video for the big game which of course we'll post on saturday probably around 12 p.m at noon let's of course get out of here let's go two and out see you guys back in tomorrow with the full action packed loaded slate let's have a great trade deadline and i'll see you guys back again tomorrow peace out